Again, that's not having any parametric force. It does not have any parametric force. So what will be happen? Suppose if this bacteria present over here, what will be happen? Now this bacteria, they are also made up of the protein. So bacteria is also made up of the protein. So if the bacteria is made up of the protein, you can destroy this bacteria with using of the lysosome. And this lysosome is called as your actually what? Suicidal bag. So that's why. This lysosome is having that's their uh, acid in it, and what will be happen? This lysosome immediately will come and splash the acid on the bacteria. But we know lysosome is present outside of the cell or inside of the cell. Where the lysosome is present? Inside cell, outside cell. Okay, where the lysosome? Inside cell, outside cell. Inside cell, because lysosome is a cell organelle. It should be present inside of the cell, not the outside of the cell. So it is inside of the cell, right? So this lysosome is present inside of the cell, but bacteria is present outside of the cell. So if lysosome wants to act on this bacteria, this bacteria first of all should go inside of the cell. And this process, when this bacteria is being inside of the cell, this is we called as the <coughs> auto. Uh, uh, sorry, this we called as your what we call this? Anybody? Endocytosis. What we call this? Endocytosis, right? And this endocytosis will be two types: phagocytosis or the chemocytosis. So what will happen? This cell will make a coat all around this bacteria, and then there will be the lysis of the membrane. This bacteria will be taken inside of the cell. The lysosome will come, and lysosome splash the acid on this bacteria, and this bacteria will be removed from this area. So this is how this bacteria can be removed again with the help of lysosome. But if this bacteria present over here, this killed by the BBC. If it is present over here, this killed by cell and lysosome killed. But suppose this bacteria is still missed or escaped from this area, and suppose this bacteria enters into this vessel. Guys, these lymphatic vessels are actually containing the lymph, and this lymph are actually going and mixing into the bigger vessel. That is the vena cava. So into the vena cava it will drain, and now from this vena cava again this fluid will be into the circulation. So this is how this lymphatic drainage will be possible. So what would be happen if this bacteria enters into this lymphatic vessel? Guys, in lymphatic vessel there is no cell. So how this bacteria will be removed from this lymphatic vessel? Because we want to make always the sterility inside the body. So what God did? God basically, God basically put some group of the cells over here, <coughs> and this group of the cells we call as nodes. What we call this? Nodes. So this group of the cells we call as nodes. These nodes are projected into which vessel? Lymphatic vessel. So these nodes are called as lymph nodes. These lymph nodes are like the checkpoints. Just like the police can knock you, if you see a police car, you can knock So this knock, what will happen? This policeman will stop you, will check your car, and if everything finds perfect, he will allow you to go further ahead. Similarly, over here, when this bacteria enters into this vessel, this bacteria will be checked by this group of cells, and these are actually your lymph nodes, which are macrophagic cells. So again, if anything found abnormal, immediately these lymph nodes will attack on it and will kill this bacteria. Again, make this lymphatic fluid sterile flow, right? So this is how this lymphatic fluid, this lymph nodes are actually situated. Now, now please pay attention. That what happens guys? There is a condition called as T1. What is the meaning of T1? I told you what is the property of this cell? The cell is having a magic property. What is the magic property? That it can divide. From the one cell it can 2, 2, 2, 4, 4, 2, 8. But suppose this division goes and control. And nobody is there to control this division. Now this division ideally should be stopped at the five stages. But it is not stopping at the five stages. It is continuously divided, 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 divided. Suppose you had a cut injury. Now the cut injury, both the skin they intact together. Now this growth should be stopped, but this growth is not stopping. What will be happen? There will be the creation of a mass. And this mass will be called as tumor. Now this tumor means why this tumor is happening? Because this cell is having the defective information which is coming from the nucleus. So whatever nucleus is replicating the information in form of DNA, this DNA is defective DNA. And these cells is having the defect, all the new cells are also defective cells, and they can also the cancer producing cell. So what is over aim? Over aim to kill these cells. So that our body can't produce more of these cells, and all the time our body can produce only and only the healthy cells, right? Now. If you want to kill this cell, how can kill? Suppose this is the cancer cell. You want to kill this cell. Number one thing, you can do a surgery. You can make incision and you can do the excision of this area so that all these cells will be excised from the body and your body will again have good healthy cells. Now, another time, if you can't remove this area, another thing you can do that's you can kill them by the race that we call as radiotherapy, or you can kill them by the chemical, by the toxins which we call as chemotherapy. So that is how the different different method to kill this bacteria or sorry, kill this cancer cell or to remove this cancer from the body is there. Now, now what happens, guys? That suppose this is making the new small cancer cell. This cancer cell, how they can be spread in the body? So they can be spread by the three routes. Number one, these small cells they can be spread first of all at the local area. Right at the nearby area, and that we call as local spread of the tumor. Right, what we call as local spread of the tumor. Number two, this cells can be spread by the blood, and they can mix into the blood, and through this blood, they can go into the further area or further organ of the body. So this is we call as amitogenic spread. Or number third, that they can enter into this lymphatic vessel, and through this lymphatic vessel again they can circulate into the fluid, or they can go further area of the bodies. So that we call as lymphatic spread. So only three types of spread will be there for the cancer: local spread, amitogenic spread, and the lymphatic spread. So if you want to detect how far these cancer cells are actually spreading, for that you have to do that staging. And this stage in the study you study is that this is your T and M stage. Why we are calling only the T and M stage? Because we are checking the spreading of the tumor. Right. So number one, how Locally, this tumor is spread. This we check by the T staging, that is the T. In which lymph node, up to which lymph node they are spread. So that we check by the nodes N. So that is our N stage. And at the blood, how far these cells are actually distributed. So that we check by the M, that is the metastasis. So that is how the three stages are there, T and M stages, right? So I hope now you can understand why in the cell, why the cancer we always study the T and M stages, right? Now, now guys, what would be happens? These lymphatic vessels are very favorite food. These vessels are very favorite food of a virus called as pyloriasis. Whenever this filariasis will enter, this filariasis doesn't like your platelet, it doesn't like your blood vessel, doesn't like your cell, it likes your lymphatic pipeline or the lymphatic vessel. What will be happen? Suppose if this lymphatic pipeline is damaged or get blocked, what will be happen? This extra fluid which is producing over here, this extra fluid can't be get out from this area because there is a blockage. What will be happen? This can lead to the accumulation of the fluid over here called as lymphedema. So that's why in the filariasis, you always see there is a lymphedema, right? And this lymphedema can lead to a very bigger fluid called as elephantitis. Like this, elephantitis. Now, now please pay attention. What will be the abnormality related to this lymphatic system? Number one. Suppose if this lymphatic system get blocked over here, suppose get blocked over here, this condition can lead to this condition can lead to lymphedema. Lymphedema. If suppose the walls of this vessels are going to be inflamed, there is inflammation, that's one condition. This condition is called as lymphangitis. 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 And suppose if the inflammation of this lymph nodes actually happens, this condition will be called as lymphadenitis
<laughs> so I hope now you can understand what is the meaning of lymphedema, what is the meaning of lymphangitis, what is the meaning of lymphadenitis. So that is how the different different conditions are there, right? Okay. So this is all lymphatic systems. I hope now you can easily understand what the lymphatic system, what's the role, what would be happen if these systems are going to be abnormal, right? So till now, that many things we have been discussed about the lymphatic systems, about the cell, how the cell looks like, what are the different, different components, everything we have been till now discussed. So now guys, let's have a break, right? And I hope till now you enjoyed a lot. Many things now you can understand that what are the different different inside the area of the body, how these cells are situated, what is the nearby structure of these cells, what is the blood components, what are the different different cells, everything, right? So now let's have a break, break for 20 minutes. I hope 20 minutes is enough. Okay, 20 minutes or 15 minutes. Just let me know. 20 minutes or 15 minutes break. Thank you, Dhamik. Okay. So let's have a 20 minute break. So we'll start class at 6.20, right now 6 o'clock. So start sharp, we'll start at 6.20. So we'll see you after the break. We also discussed about that the cell is having a CEO also called as director of the cell and that is one nucleus. So all of the functionality inside the cell, it could be happen only with the command of the director and that is one nucleus. Now, we also discussed that inside of our body, each and every cell should be under the regulation of the boss, that is the brain. And this brain is connected either via the nerve or either via this hormones, right? Now, so let's talk about the composition of the cell. So in the cell, we already discussed that this is suppose your cell. This cell is having three composition. Number one, the outer area of the cell is called as cell membrane. And then inside water, that we call as intercellular membrane, also called as cytoplasm. And this is your nucleus. So now we are going to discuss how the cell membrane is looks like, what is the thickness of the cell membrane, what is the structure and model of the cell membrane. Uh, the cell membrane is mainly made up of big substances, so everything we are going to discuss. Because we know that whatever is going inside the cell, it must be crossed the cell membrane, right? So that's why the cell membrane is become a very, very important part of the cell. So, now, so the thickness of the cell membrane is 7.5, the 7.5 to 10 nanometer. And if it is in the M-strong, then 70 to 100 M-strong. The structural model of cell membrane is given by two doctors named as a Singer and Nicholson in 1972, and they gave this model name as fluid. Mosaic, fluid mosaic model, fluid mosaic model, right? Now the function of the cell membrane, it provides the protection, selective vulnerability, absorption, excretion function, gas exchange, and maintain shape and size of the cell. Now guys, this picture is not even in your workbook, so you can understand over here. That's the difference between the extracellular fluid and the intracellular fluid, right? So later on, I will let you know that's where the sodium is actually present, where the potassium is actually present, everything we are going to be discussed, okay? So this is the comparison between the extra and intracellular substances. Now, talking about the cell membrane. Guys, <coughs> as the cell membrane is a part of the cell, and if it is a part of the cell, basically it is made by the cell. And this cell is having only the three raw material, that is our protein, lipid, and carb. The most of the cell membrane is mainly made up of the protein. And protein is 55%, 55% is protein, 40% is lipid, and only 5% is carbohydrate. So 55% is protein, 40% is lipid, and 5% is carbohydrate. So how the cell membrane looks like? Guys, this is your cell membrane, which you can see over here. This is your cell membrane, how it looks like. In the cell membrane, this orange area, these orange molecules, this is actually the lipid layer, and this semi blue or navy blue area that you can see over here, or the greenish area, this is actually your protein area, or this is also called as protein layer. So, this cell membrane either made up of the protein or either made up of the lipid. We know that inside and outside of the cell, there is always water. So, suppose this is extracellular fluid and this is intracellular fluid, right? Extra and intracellular fluid. Now, we know that if this is the lipid layer, how this lipid layer can live in a watery environment? Because we know the oil, it never mixes with the water. So, how this oil can always live into the watery environment? And this happens due to the special property of this lipid molecule. So, this one molecule which you can see over here, when we do the zoom, this molecule is look something like this. In this molecule, this is the head portion and this is the tail portion. The head portion is hydrophilic in nature. Hydro means water. Philic means loving, who loves the water, who can live with the water. And tail portion is hydrophobic in nature. Hydro means water, phobic means fear, who always fears with the water. So this is how the special property of this lipid molecule, this lipid molecule can always remain in a watery substance. So as you can see over here, that only head portion can always live with the water. There is no problem with the head portion. So that's why this lipid layer, as you can see, that extracellular area is always connected with the head and intracellular is same. So that's why this lipid molecule are arranged into a bilayering structure. And that's why this lipid layer is your bilayer in nature. Now, after that, talking about the protein layer. Actually, I told you the 55% is the protein and only 40% is the lipid. Here in this picture, might be you can think, sir, the lipid portion is more. Why are telling the lipid portion is less? Actually, this is looking in the picture, but in general, that's protein part is always more and lipid part is always less, right? Now, now talking about this protein. This protein can be two types. Number one, the integral protein. Another one is uh, that's extrinsic or the peripheral protein. Now, the name is already suggesting the integral or intrinsic protein means the protein layer or the protein substance which is passing through the entire thickness of the cell membrane. So, this is passing through the entire thickness of the cell membrane like this. This is called as integral protein or also called as intrinsic protein. Another type of protein which is all, always present only on the peripheral side, so that we call as peripheral protein. It is never across the entire thickness, right? And they are actually providing what? 
they are providing some cell signaling receptors, right? So this lipid layer can be made up of two types. Number one, via the intrinsic protein, via the extrinsic protein, right? So this is how this protein and lipid layer is actually present. Now, whatever molecule is water soluble in nature, right? Whatever substance suppose you are eating, you are eating the sugar. Sugar need to go where? Sugar need to go inside the cell. Suppose you are eating the protein, protein need to go where? Inside the cell. Because we know all the substance, whatever you are consuming, it actually it need to enter inside the cell. And if it need to enter inside the cell, guys, it need to cross the cell membrane. Now the cell membrane is having two layers. Number one is protein layer, another one lipid layer. So if this product is water soluble, it will cross via the protein layer because proteins are very well soluble in the water. So any substance which is water soluble in nature, they will cross the cell membrane via the protein layer. And any substance which is lipid soluble in nature, that is always crossed via the lipid layer. And that's why in the body we always study that the lipid soluble that's the water soluble. Because we just want to get to know that's why which layer it basically will enter inside the cell. Because if each cell can enter inside the cell, or if each cell can enter inside the cell, then basically it will cross the cell membrane. So any product which is water soluble, it will cross via protein layer. Any substance which is lipid soluble, that will cross via the lipid layer. And what are the substances which is lipid soluble? Like the gases, oxygen need to enter inside the cell. CO2 need to get out from the cell. From which layer they will cross the cell membrane? They will cross via the lipid layer. Because all the gases they are lipid soluble in nature. Similarly, there is a protein, protein called as, uh, sorry, there is a vitamin, vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin E, vitamin K, ADA. So this vitamin A, D, E, K, they all are lipid soluble in nature. So they will cross this cell membrane by the lipid layer. Similarly, like the fatty acid, thyroid hormone, and the steroid hormone, because they also need to enter inside the cell. Right, guys? Where is the thyroid hormone receptor? Where is the steroid hormone receptor? Inside the cell. Inside the cell means they need to cross the cell membrane. Why? Which layer they will cross? They will not cross via this protein. They will cross via this lipid, right? So this is how this lipid and protein layer are actually present. Now the question comes. Now the question comes. That highest protein content per gram of tissue. As I told you, that's most of the area of the body, or most of the lipid layer. Basically, they are having on an average 55% of protein and 40% is lipid. But some area in the body which is having more amount of the protein in cell membrane rather than containing the 55, they contain around 80% of the protein part. And that area becomes the highest protein content per gram of tissue. And this area is your inner mitochondrial membrane. This is your inner mitochondrial membrane. Because I told you guys that mitochondria is a membranous organelle, and if it is membranous organelle, the inner layer of this mitochondria is having maximum amount of the protein. Then similarly, some area of the body which containing the more amount of the lipid, not the 40%, suppose they are containing 70 to 80% of the lipid, it will become what? If lipid content is more, protein content is going to be very less. So that's what we call as lowest protein content per gram of tissue. And that is your myelin sheath. Myelin sheath, guys, we will study in the neurons. It is present on the neurons on the axon area and it provides a faster connection by the neurons. So that is the myelin sheath. So the lipid layer, they are the semi permeable, by their structure, fluid in nature, provide the solubility and allow only an unfair soluble substances like all the gases. Your Saturday evening product. This is a Saturday evening product. Again, ah, yes. There is a good smile on your face. That's why I'm listening. Saturday evening product, right? Alcohol. Then the vitamin. Vitamin A, D, E, K, right? And the fatty acid and thyroid hormone and the steroid hormone, right? Now, for this fatty acid, which what are the major components which is actually utilized for making this lipid layer? So, guys, this is actually made up by the phospholipid. And this phospholipid means from here, this phospho means phosphate and lipid means fatty acid. So, from here, this phosphate is now okay. Guys, ATP, adenosine triphosphate. This ATP, when breaks into the ADP, one phosphate removes separate and it remains the ADP and it releases the energy. So, this one phosphate which is released from this ATP, this is utilized by the fatty acid and makes a component called as phospholipid. This phospholipid is having different, different subcomponent and the subcomponent is number one is phosphatidyl. Phosphatidyl ionositol. Phosphatidyl ionositol. Phosphatidyl serine. <coughs> then phosphatidyl. Phosphatidyl choline. Phosphatidyl choline. Sphingomyelin. 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 Phosphatidyl. Phosphatidyl, ethanolamine, and cardiolipin, and cardiolipin. So these are the phospholipid subcomponents: phosphatidyl ionositol, phosphatidyl serine, phosphatidyl choline, and cardiospingomyelin, phosphatidyl ethanolamine, and cardiolipin. Now, this phosphatidyl ionositol, this is actually your IP3. That is your secondary messenger. Phosphatidyl serine is studied in the patho. It required for the apoptosis signal. This choline and sphingomyelin, they will produce the surfactant that we will study in the respiratory system. If the surfactant is not there, it can lead to the respiratory distress syndrome, all the high disease. Then the phosphatidyl ethanolamine or the cardiolipin. This cardiolipin basically is present mainly in mainly in CVS, mainly in uh, heart. You can say the mainly in heart. Right? This is mainly present in the heart and it can be defect via the trypanoma pallidium. So that's when the syphilis, there is heart, symptoms is also comes. Right? Now the next component of this lipid, that is the cholesterol. This required for packing of the phospholipid. Cholesterol, packing of the phospholipid. Then the glycolipid. Glycolipid is two types. Number one is cerebrosidase. Cerebrosidase. And number two is gangliosidase. Gangliosidase. This gangliosidase, it can be destroyed by cholera. Vibrio cholera. And this is mainly in GID. That's why in cholera, there is a rice water ID. The component which is gangliosidase, the component which is not utilized for making this lipid layer of this fatty acid, that is our, that is our triglyceride. Triglyceride. Right? So triglyceride right, not utilized for making this cell membrane. Now as PUFA, may, uh, sorry this fatty acid, this fatty acid can be two types. Fatty acid can be two types. Number one is PUFA and another one is SAFA. PUFA and SAFA. Which one is good? PUFA or SAFA? PUFA means polyunsaturated fatty acid and SAFA means saturated fatty acid. Which one is good for the body? PUFA or SAFA? 
Yes, yes, guys, yes. You can remember like this P for perfect. P for perfect, P for pupa. So this is good for body. This is good, and these are bats. So all the junk foods, whatever junk food you eat, pizza, burger, pasta, whatever you eat, basically they all contain the safa. That's why they are bad for the health. Okay? So they are containing the safa, saturated fatty acid. Now talking about the protein layer. The major component of the protein layer is your number one. Cell adhesion protein. Cell adhesion protein. Cell adhesion protein. Another one is cell junction protein. Cell adhesion protein, cell junction protein. What is the function of the protein layer? To allow water soluble substance across cell membrane. Allow water soluble substances across cell membrane. Two categories is there, integral or transmembrane protein, which is also known as intrinsic protein. And peripheral protein is also known as